do I own him? Oh, how much I do I own him? Well, how much do I that you gave your only begotten son 
to die that we might have a right to eternal life. Oh God, we've come on this day to bless your holy and righteous name. We've come on this day to let others know whose side we are. We bless you now. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses, excuse me, three through five. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. I want to talk blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Paul began with an account of his troubles in God's goodness. Paul's troubles versus God's goodness. Our troubles versus God's goodness. It's a mismatch. Our troubles are no match for God and his goodness. Every Son of Adam and every daughter of Eve to weigh their troubles in view of the goodness of God. You see, trouble is temporary. God's goodness is guaranteed. In this life, you will discover that tears are only temporary and joy is the permanent reality. Therefore, we must saturate our lives in the goodness of God. And let me start by saying that 11 out of 13 epistles of Paul begin with shouts of praise, joy, and thanksgiving. It was Charles Dickens who said, reflect upon your present blessings, of which every man has many, not on your past misfortunes, of which all men have some. Present blessings and past bad actions. We all have some. All of us have or have had some little rascal in us. When we were young, we used to call it devilish. Some call it mannish. God has been good. He has been extravagantly and excessively good. We have something to praise God for. We have something to shout about. We have a reason to celebrate in the season of our suffering. Every time I think about how good God has been to me, I feel a surge of joy flooding like an overflowing river. When I think of his goodness, I, I have joy in my sorrow. Uh, I have an anchor in life's raging sea. Uh, I have a grip on something that is stronger than me. Talk about, I, do you, I got milk and I got God. <laughs> I have God's goodness. I, I have the benefits of God's blessings. Oh, my brothers and sisters, ours is a joy the world can't squeeze from us. We sing this joy I have. Uh, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Oh, yeah, every day is a special gift from God. 
And while life may not always be fair, we must never allow the pains, uh, the hurdles and handicaps of the moment to poison our attitude and plans for ourselves and our future. When you get up in the morning, it's a blessing. Matter of fact, it's a gift. You, you, you didn't have to get up this morning. God could have left you there. Matter of fact, a whole lot of deserving people. People better than you and me. People brighter and much smarter than you and me. And people in a higher socioeconomic status. Uh, people with more influence. Uh, with a brighter outlook on life. Uh, people who have less drama in their lives. Uh, people who don't complain as much. Uh, people who don't indulge in ungodly conversation. A whole lot of deserving people didn't get up this morning. Men and women who love God and love his church. People who are tireless workers. People who are trying to work while it's day. Because they know the night is coming when no man can work. Well, since every day is a gift. When God allowed you to get up this morning, you should have had a made up in your mind that you were going to try to live holy and try to live right. You should have committed yourself that as much as life in you to live peaceably with all men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But whatever trouble you are in, uh, whatever trial you are going through, whatever drama is pulling you down, whatever dark night of the soul you are experiencing, whatever debt you are dreading, uh, whatever relationship in your life that has gone bad, uh, whatever job you have lost, uh, whatever sickness you have, whether it's mental, physical, spiritual, or, or you're just plain sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah, yeah. When, 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 when you get up, yeah, when you got up this morning, your song of praise should have been when I rose this morning. And, 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 and that, that's what makes it different from every other morning. Because this morning I didn't get up with forges. Uh, this morning I didn't get up with Maxwell in the house. This morning I didn't get up with Waffle House. Uh, yeah. When I got out of my bed this morning, I didn't have no doubt in my mind that the Lord would bring me out. Oh yeah, 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 we are, we are blessed. Uh, matter of fact, we are better than blessed. But, but, but have you ever considered why God allows blessings in your life? Now, we usually don't lie awake at night Wondering why God has allowed such blessings to happen to us. We act like it's normal for God to give us a good life. We usually accept these blessings, give thanks, and enjoy them without a lot of thought. Oh yeah, we, 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 we really do not deserve blessings when they come. God doesn't owe us anything. Thank, th thank you, choir. We owe him everything. Yeah, 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 we owe him so much. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and I owe the Lord so much. Uh, and, 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 and so what I think, in, in order to pay him back, I have to praise him. Uh, and the more I praise him, the more he blesses me. And I find myself in 
him more dead. I, I gotta praise him some more and I praise him some more and I mean dead some more. Every one of us can testify he's blessing us. It's both possible and proper to praise God and be a blessing to others in the midst of our trials. Look at here. God blesses us, blesses us so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. For, for deliverance from his trials, Paul expresses gratitude to God. Don't miss it. For, for delivering him from his trials, Paul expressed gratitude to God. When the last time you thank God, for bringing you through. When, when the last time? None of us deserve his blessings. Uh, none of us deserve another chance. But God gives us mercy. He gives us his blessings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Our blessings are in him. I, I can't help what you have. Uh, your blessing in what you got. Yeah, your blessings are in him. Christ is the great reservoir of blessing and only those who have this living connection share in his great spiritual blessing. Without Christ a sinner is spiritually dead and morally bankrupt. In Christ a saint is spiritually alive. Without Christ, one is nothing, has nothing, can do nothing. In Christ, one is everything, has everything, and can do everything in Christ. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh yeah, I'm convinced that God is blind when it comes to blessing us because he blesses us not because of, but in spite of who we are or what we've done. Aren't you glad that God don't hold over you what you used to do? Or how you used to live. Much is required. Yeah, of all who have been greatly blessed. To whom much is given. Much is required. Paul says he is qualified to administer consolation. Why, Paul? Paul said, Potsa, I've been there. Oh yeah, we, we administer criticism, uh, cutting remarks and derogatory statements quite well. But how many of us are qualified consolers? We have not mastered the art of consolation. Yeah, because we are blessed. We need to be a blessing to somebody else. Hunt down, look for an opportunity to bless others. God does not comfort you to make you comfortable, but to make you comfort us. So you've been through it. You've been up, down, and almost level to the ground. You've been through the storm and the rain. You've been to wit's end. You've been there. Trouble, just name it. You've been there broke, busted, and somebody said he even discussed it. So, so lonesome you could cry. Not a friend in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but what have you learned from all of that? What was the take home from your experience? Too many of us are showing signs of forgetfulness. We forget about how good the Lord has been and is to us. We've forgotten about those around us. Paul said it like this, as we have opportunity, let us 
do good. Grab a chance and lift somebody up. Grab a chance and speak in encouraging words to some downtrodden soul. You ought to be a blessing to somebody. That's yes, because the Lord hadn't just now started blessing you. Yes. Yeah, the Lord has been watching over you all the days of your life. Yes. Everybody ought to be like the snowflake. Yes. Snowflakes are one of nature's most fragile things. Yes. Oh, but just look what they can do when they stick together. I tell you, we got to stick together. We got to learn how to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And I heard somebody say, walk together, children. Yeah, Lord, God blesses you so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. I come by to tell you, uh, stick by somebody, uh, stand in the gap for somebody. Help them over, uh, help them uh, through their dark dilemma. There are others whose spirits are anemic and who could use an uplifting dose of consolation. Yet yeah, the hardest arithmetic to master is that which allows us to count our blessing. Yes, we've had to cry sometimes and go through our sorrows, sometimes wondering what the next day will bring. And Lord, there have been times when you didn't know which way to turn. Oh, but in every situation, God gave blessed consolation to remind you that your trials come only to make you strong. Good God Almighty, I wonder, has anybody here ever wondered sometimes uh, why you go through uh, what you do? Sometimes it looks like every time you come out of one storm before you can take your rain gear off, you find yourself in another storm. But oh, I come by to tell you, I thank God for my ups and my downs. I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. I heard somebody say that if he had, if he had never had a problem, I would have known that he could solve it. Yeah, Lord, but have you learned anything? Well, I've learned that all that I go through. I've got to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust God. I've learned to depend on the Lord. Yes, Lord, I come by to tell you, family is good to have supporting family. It's good to have a supporting church. It's good to have a supporting spouse but I come by to tell you you gotta go beyond uh, and realize uh, that all of my help uh, comes uh, from the Lord uh, not some of my help but uh, 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 all of my help uh, comes uh, from the Lord uh, you have to believe that the Lord is blessing you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. I wonder, is there anybody up in here can testify the Lord, he's blessing me. I've been up and I've been down but the Lord, he's blessing me. I've been sick, I've been well but the Lord is blessing me. I've been broke, I've had some money, the Lord is blessing me when I couldn't see my way the Lord is blessing me when I threw up my hand the Lord is blessing me when I wonder hey Lord yeah is the Lord gonna move in my life but then every step I take 
week, I realize that the Lord has given me another chance. I come by to tell you, every step you take is a reminder that the Lord still got his hand on you. Every blinking of the eye is a reminder that the Lord got his hand on you. Every breath you take, inhale and exhale, it's a sign that the Lord still got his hand on you. I wonder, I wonder, is there anybody up in here? Said the Lord, the Lord, he got his hand on me. He walks with me. He talks with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One Friday, it didn't look like it, but the Lord was setting us up for a blessing. All that week uh, leading up to Friday, the Lord was setting us up for a blessing. Uh, yeah, when he died, the Lord was setting us up for a blessing. Uh, to tell me they put him in a bar of tomb. Uh, he was setting us up for a blessing. Uh, he stayed there all Friday night. Uh, yeah, setting us up for a blessing. Uh, he stayed there all day Saturday. Uh, and all Saturday night, uh, he was setting us up for a blessing. Uh, but oh, 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 oh. My blessing, yeah, Lord. I realized it uh, when he got up out of that grave. Uh, now look at here. It seems like my blessings uh, just started when he got up. But I come by to tell you, the Lord, down through the years, he been watching over us. Uh, down through the years, uh, the Lord has been taking care of us. Down through the years, uh, the Lord has Lord, uh, hello. Sometimes we wake up uh, and it seems like we are just now experiencing the law. But you see, it may be your first time. But down before I was conceived in my mother's womb, uh, the Lord knew that I would be here on June 4th, uh, 2017, here in the Lord's house. And I tell you, uh, the Lord is blessed. Blessing me, the Lord, anybody, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, anybody, yeah, you may be in your storm, uh, but if they're here, blessing me, got a doctor's appointment, it don't look good, but he's blessing me, he's blessing me, he's keeping me, yeah, Lord, he keeps on blessing me uh, and he's blessing me not mm, for me to just talk about it but I gotta share the blessing uh, I gotta tell somebody else like Jeremiah said just like fire 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 Shut up in my bone. I gotta tell somebody, yeah. I gotta tell you, he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. That's what I like about it. I don't have to go way back. I can start with early this morning. He woke me in my right mind. Yeah, Lord. Oh, yeah. But he's blessing us. So we can be a blessing to somebody else you see when the Lord blesses you and I got some folks they've shared their life with me they'll tell you when the Lord bless you and you put it in your hand call yourself trying to keep it up after one you look and you don't know where it went but I come by to tell you yeah whatever afflictions you have the Lord wants you to be a blessing yeah whatever you go through and when you go through it don't wait till you come out of your storm to 
to be a witness uh, be a witness in the storm uh, be a witness in your struggles uh, be a witness in your sickness uh, I don't know how it's going to come out uh, but I'm trusting and I'm leaning and I'm depending on the law and I made up my mind uh, whatever the Lord said it's all right it's all right it's all right oh! It's all right. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. name. Anybody got to thank you. Anybody got to thank you, Lord. him you ought to thank him right now it may be your last time blessed to be a blessing oh yeah you can't make me doubt him no too much no too much about it He's done too much for me. He's brought me too far to not talk about it and not share his goodness and his mercy. The point is, the Lord don't bless you just to be blessing you. He blesses us so we be a blessing and I'm serious. Look for. Don't wait for it to fall in your lap. Look for opportunities to be a blessing. More than once. And I'm not saying brag, I'm just for information. I've been in Wally World. That's Walmart immeasurable. I've been in Wally World, and more than once there have been individuals in the line. Didn't have money or their card didn't go through. And I always look to see what's on the counter. Because I ain't gonna buy no beer for nobody. Maybe Deacon Barkins, but other than that. <laughs> and I use that opportunity. And they said, give me a card so I can send it back. I don't do it. Be blessed. Thank you. Because if, if I really think about it, there have been times when I didn't have. There were times when I didn't have and somebody else took care of me. Somebody else was a blessing. You ever been so broke Till if you had a penny, you'd feel like a rich person. And then, but look at here. The Lord don't always send blessings in the form of monies. Sometimes folks are doing something that, that, that sometimes better than money. They, they, they allow the Lord to use them to be a blessing. Every time I think about my years at Morehouse, and mom and daddy didn't have much, but the sacrifice they made, that's why ain't nothing. And I've told you before, if I'm on my way to church on a Sunday morning, and mama or daddy call me, because they, they, they know what I do, so they ain't calling just to be calling. When he said, Irvin, you need to come home. I want you to know I will be turning around before I get here. Because mama and daddy have taken care of me. And I've made up in my mind, I'm going to look out for them, but I'm going to do the same thing for my boys. I don't mind taking care of them. I've yet had to bail them out of jail, so I don't mind.
I did you. Just think about it. See, and I'm through now, but see, a lot of us want to act like we always been dressed and dressing fine and riding good and smelling. Somebody, you may were, but somebody made a sacrifice. Somebody sacrificed for you to dress decent. Uh, and that's why we gotta learn how to I even to use it, pass it around. But we gotta learn how to be a blessing to others, just like how others have been a blessing to us. By the help of the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. Blessed to be a blessing to others. God bless you. God keep you. I'm trying to stop now, but every time. I think of his goodness every time. I think about how he's brought me. Every time I look where he brought me from. Every time I think about how awesome he is. I just can't keep it to myself. I got to tell somebody that the Lord is good. God bless you. Maybe there's somebody here who have not been positioned to be that blessed person, to be a blessing to others. I invite you to come now. Right now. Kind of a baptism by letter oh, right and Christian experience. However, the Holy Spirit sleeps. Come now. While you have in this opportunity. I believe that testimony is that one day there was a time when they were homeless. So now they have a ministry that that's their focus. They give me the other ministers, but they're really trying to support even those who are on the street, blankets and different items that 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 they do. So they they're gonna come in their own way. Also, you remember I asked that we, you come prepared to give a love offering. Also, those of you who use Givelify, they own Givelify. Amen. You can go in whatever you give, or we will send that to them. We will get that to them as well. So. Uh, give life. I want to thank Deacon Hudson. Uh, thank the, uh, Deacon Mason for telling. I mean, for uh, instru- yeah, I give it Deacon. Uh, yeah, and he, he's already it's already set up. So we are grateful uh, for that. Uh, we're gonna come down pool pit, and we can turn it over to Immeasurable. They're gonna come and introduce themselves and present yeah. themselves. Come on, if you love Jesus, put your Glory hands together to and give him some praise. Amen, amen. I said, if you love Jesus, put your hands together and give him some praise. Oh, you can do a lot better than that. If he woke you up yes. this morning, put your hands together Thank and you, give Jesus. him some praise. If Glory you walked in here, if you rolled in here, put your hands together and give our God some praise. Glory the, God. the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Thank so you. if you're breathing, open up your mouth and give him praise. Thank he you, deserves Lord. the glory. He yes, deserves he the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We came Glory to give to God, God praise this morning for God Amen. is an awesome God. God woke us all up this morning. We're truly excited to be here with you all this Amen. morning. We're National Christian Recording Duo Immeasurable. We're originally from Baltimore, Maryland, but we actually live here in Georgia. And it's a blessing because we're never really able to be here in Georgia. But it's awesome and amazing that this weekend we actually chose your ministry to come to to be a blessing to. Because how many of you all just know, just like Pastor spoke today, God calls us to be a blessing to others. Amen. And so God sent us to this house to be a blessing. Put your hands together for Glory what God, God is doing for this house. Amen. I want to do this really quickly uh, before we jump in and minister because we are going to sing. Uh, normally when we travel to ministries, I've noticed so much and there's just so many things that we see that artists always kind of come to ministries and all they do is take from the ministry. And God has truly called us to be different. I'm sure everybody can see that by now that he's called us to be a blessing wherever we go. And so, Dr. Pats, if you can stand up. We want to bless you with our men's line of bracelet watches. And we just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing in this community, everything that you're doing in this church and in the lives of this congregation. Put your hands together for the pastor of this house. (laughs) Hallelujah. And how many of you all know that beside every strong man is a strong woman? And so First Lady Pats, if you can stand up with your beautiful self, put your hands together for your First Lady. 
we want to present to you our women's bracelet line, Rose Gold, and say thank you for standing with the vision. A lot of times, you know, the first ladies aren't really, you know, honored and mentioned. And so we honor you this day, First Lady Potts, for everything you're doing and just for joining the vision that God has given Amen. your husband. Put your hands together for the leaders of this house. Glory to God. Uh, we're a street ministry, and we believe in going out every day to places like Walmart, Home Depot, just wherever there are people. Because how many of you all know sometimes the only Jesus people will ever have the opportunity to see Amen. is the one that lives inside of you and me. And so we go out and share the love of Christ right now. I'm in my second year of college studying to get my bachelor's degree in theology. You can put your hands together for Amen. that. My group member, my sidekick right here, just graduated about six or seven months ago with Glory honors with Hallelujah. her bachelor's in theology Amen. from Grand Amen. Canyon. And so normally we walk in places, people kind of look at us like, well, why are these girls walking here looking so weird? You know? I mean, most people say it, they just don't say it to us. And so we just want to acknowledge what sometimes say it, you know? And so we want to tell you why we came looking so weird. We represent the colorfulness of the rainbow because the world has taken the rainbow to mean that of homosexuality. But in Genesis 9 and 13, it says that God gave his children and the creatures the rainbow as a promise that he would never, ever flood the earth again with water. And so we just came to let somebody know this morning that the rainbow represents God's promise and not a lifestyle. If you know it to be so, let the redeemed of the Lord put your hand together in this place for what God has Hallelujah. promised us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I wear my hair in the ponytails because it symbolizes how we as a body of Christ should come to God and how we should read his word. And that's like a child. Amen. And when you accept the word of God like a child, you're able to love God and you're able to trust God just a little bit more. And the more you do that, the more God is able to manifest himself faithfully each and every day of our lives. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, I wear my hair in the mohawk because in ancient times, the Indians wore their hair in the mohawk hairstyle to scare off the enemy. So I represent the Joshua generation, Amen. the bold for Christ. Anybody get bold for Christ? Lord, See, God. mother, because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, hey. but evil spirits in high places. So if I got anybody in here that's a warrior, get up on hey. your feet and give the Lord some praise Hallelujah. in this place. For he's Lord, an awesome God. God. For Thank he's a great see. God. Yes, he God, is. we worship you. God, we Hallelujah. honor you. How many of you all know that it's true? Lord, something God. about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shoot. the name of Jesus. When I call your name When I call yeah. your name Jesus Said it's just like fire yes, yes. So I'm all in my bones And I feel the Holy Ghost moving y'all And it just won't leave me alone Yeah, there's something about the name of Jesus about when you call on Jesus' name. Hey, it is sweet. It is the sweetest, the sweetest name I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. See, I love singing this song everywhere I go, Mother oh, Pot. Because I remember when I was a little bitty girl. I remember how my grandmother used to take me to church. And sometimes she would go through some things. But she said, Yana, whenever you're going through something, learn how to get down on your knees and call on Jesus. Jesus, hey, everything will be all right. 
But it's not that we're the worst kids. It's just that the attack of the enemy on our lives is to distract from our parents giving the word of God. It's not that we're the worst. It's just that the devil, we yield to him the most because we reject what's in the household. We reject what we see on Sunday morning. And like I said, I went out and did my own thing. And I remember one night I was coming home with this guy I had no business being out with. See, because I didn't really know God loved me. I heard the scriptures in church and I heard people quoted, but I never really knew it for myself. Coming home that night, the guy that dropped me off just drove off and normally my friends kind of always waited for me. But this particular night, he just drove off and as I walked up to my apartment door that I lived in to get upstairs where I lived at, I heard clear as day Satan say to me, you're going to die tonight. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I was drunk, I was high, but I knew that that wasn't the voice of God. And as I walked into the door, and I turned around and I looked on the other side as the door closed, there was a man standing on the other side of the door. See, what's so awesome about my God is that the assignment of that man was to kill me. His assignment was to murder me. But God's assignment was that I shall live and proclaim his works. That I shall live and declare his word. So when I say I've been changed, I'm truly talking about being changed by God. Being changed because God will either win you over by affliction or he'll win you by affection. Hallelujah. Some of you all in here, God, to go through things for God to get your attention and say I'm calling you you're running but I'm calling you yes. you're playing but I'm calling you you play in church but I'm calling you Hallelujah. God says I want a people that will truly accept real change not just change on Sunday but you leave out of here you live in any kind of way your mouth is foul your life is foul God says I want true change is there anybody in here that truly desires to really be changed by God? That's why we worship God the way we do. That's why we give him praise the way that we do. Because we realize without God, we are truly nothing. If you truly love God in this place, give him praise for what he's done in your life. What he's doing in your life. Give him praise for the change in your life. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We give you glory. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Because he lives. Oh, he By the grace of the Lord, I've come a long way. Oh, say I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but my God, my God, my God, my God, He made that old dead behave. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you're excited Thank about you, God's Jesus. love in this place, put your hands together and Glory give God to some God. praise.
You know, growing up in church, I heard a lot of different songs that my grandmama was singing. I never really understood a lot of them until I got a pl to a pl place with God for myself that I really said, God, well, I really need you. And all of those hymns and all of those songs came back to my memory. And it was one in particular that says, just another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day that the Lord, that he's kept me, he's kept me from all evil, because I kept my mind, mother, I kept my mind stayed on Jesus, and it's just another day. We praise your holy Hallelujah, name, Jesus. You're worthy of the glory, Lord. You're worthy of the honor, Lord. You're worthy of the glory, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. He Hallelujah, Jesus. Touch me. something the reason why we're singing these hymns and they coming up and up and up because like pastor said we've been through a lot we're preachers kids and we started off in church but we straight away because we started off we were singing R&B music we don't want to have nothing to do with the church because we see so many wrong things so the devil tried to make us stray away and in the midst of what we were doing we were offered a one million dollar record deal on the table ready to sign and everything to do secular music but God began to deal with our hearts. And God said, Immeasurable, I want you to walk away from it all. I want you to totally surrender and serve me. And I want you all to know this morning that we walked away from it all. And we've been serving God unashamed for 12 years. And can't no devil in hell stop what God is doing in our ministry today. But I got to be real with y'all. When we walked away from that record deal, God didn't share with us that not only three months later, we found ourselves out on the streets. We were homeless and we lost everything that we had. And God still required us to go into full-time ministry. So a lot of times when we were walking to churches on Sunday mornings, we were embarrassed because people laughed at how we looked and they laughed at how we dressed. But nobody knew that when we came to church on those Sunday mornings, we were coming to church from an old busted up hotel room that sometimes we couldn't even afford to pay $40 a day for. And we would be in our rooms, and we would be going through our bags, trying to find something decent enough to wear. And what we found, it never matched. It never went together, but it was all that we had. And we wore it anyway. So we went forward, even though we were embarrassed to walk into those churches. And one day God spoke to our hearts, and God said, Immeasurable, I want you to go into these churches, and I want you to hold your head up high because it's not about the clothes that you're wearing, but it's about the anointing of God and the message that you're carrying. So we continue to move forward with what God told us to do. So that's why we stand before you all this morning, dressed the same exact way in all these colors, all these stripes and all these patterns, because this is truly our testimony where God has brought us from. God said immeasurable, let the world know that when they hear your music being played all over the radio stations, that you dress this way because it symbolizes that your worship for me is truly for real. So
So we've been traveling across the country. We have a single that's being played all over the nation right now. It's in the top 20 in the country. It's called He Loves Us. And we have not been traveling to promote that single, but we've been traveling across the country because we've started a nonprofit organization called Immeasurable Cares, where we're attempting to raise funds to partner with 24 shelters across the country so that we can buy coffee, so that we can buy trash bags and blankets, whatever the need is for these shelters, because we promised God if he would ever bring us out of our situation, we would go back and help those who are less fortunate than we are. Amen, somebody. So like the pastor said, we really need you all's help. We have a table to sit out in the front. We want you all to please don't rush out their door. Please come back to our table and purchase something off that table. And for those of you all who are listening right now, if God has touched your heart in any way, we want you all to go a step further. We need you all. If we can get 50 people in here to make a sacrifice and to sow a seed into our ministry of at least $25 or more, whether it's $25, $50, $100, $1,000, I don't know, whatever God lays on your heart. Because when you sow into our ministry, it doesn't only help us, but a portion of those proceeds go directly to our nonprofit organization so that we can continue our obligation to those 24 shelters every single month. Amen, somebody? So we accept all forms of payments, whether it's cash, credit, check, whatever it is, we accept it all. And we want you all to understand, if God is touching your heart right now to make that seed, understand the only reason why he's touching your heart is because he understands that he can be- get a blessing through you. And if he can get that blessing through you, he knows he can definitely get a blessing to you. So we love y'all. We thank you for this opportunity. Please hear the voice of God. Don't ignore it. We Thank you so much, Dr. Potts, for this opportunity. God bless y'all. We love y'all. Amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. But truly, we've been blessed in this place on this day.